Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Is anyone there? Good afternoon, Doc. Yeah. Um, can you see the slides? Yeah, yes, 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 we can. Okay, so I think those that have come early uh, will just uh, get this bonus presentation quickly because I know that no one really discusses this issue. So like in the next 10 minutes, maybe maximum 15, we'll go through, then we'll go to the main um, agenda item for this, uh, for this presentation. Yeah, so no one really talks about destructive, um, a destructive uh, obstetric procedures, um, but we are going to talk about them uh, just in a few minutes. My slides are not moving, I don't know why. Yeah. So um, destructive procedures are becoming rarer and rarer. Uh, the reason is because um, people are saying that a fetus is human and um, we should not dismember it. So, you know, we do destructive procedures when we have uh, like an obstructed labor, the baby's on the vulva and it cannot come out and the baby's already dead. So, should we take the mother for cesarean section or not? So most mothers are saying that, no, we shouldn't do that because they want to take pictures of the baby. Um, some of them have been taking scans and they already have a relationship with this, with this baby. They don't want it to be um, delivered in pieces. They want their baby born intact. So we can see that some mothers want um, to get footprints for the baby. They want to get handprints. They want to get fingerprints. They want to get pictures with, a, with, a, with an intact baby so that um, they have some memories of that uh, human being. So really that's, that's the background, why they are becoming rarer and rarer, especially in the urban, in the urban setups. So that's, that's one, uh, one issue about um, these procedures. Then um, are the, old, uh, the old traditional, like uh, uh, the gynecologists that have been practicing for a long time will tell you that if the baby is dead, don't kill the mother. So the baby is already dead. The woman is in second stage. Uh, why are we taking the, the mother for C-section? Because in our setup, Caesarean section has a very high morbidity and very high mortality sometimes. So do you want to risk the mother going for C-section in a situation where you know the baby is dead, you know the baby won't survive? So why are you risking um, uh, the mother's life in a situation where the baby is already dead? So that's the background. So these are the types of um, destructive procedures that are available. Uh, we can see there we have uh, craniosynthesis, craniotomy, cladotomy, symphysiotomy, decapitation, and evisceration. We'll go through all this in a few minutes. So for you to be able to do a destructive procedure, what prerequisites should be there? Of course, it's a destructive procedure, so the baby should be dead, or the baby should be severely malformed, knowing that it won't survive after birth. The cervix should be ideally fully dilated, the descent should be at least two fifths, meaning that the baby should be at least engaged. The membranes should be ruptured and the uterus shouldn't be ruptured because in these situations, sometimes the labor has been prolonged. You need to make sure that the uterus is not ruptured when you are doing these um, destructive procedures. So normally you'd resuscitate the baby, get your HB, cross-match the baby or cross-match the mother, give the mother broad spectrum antibiotics, get informed consent because you are going to bring uh, deliver this baby in pieces. So you don't want to do this procedure 
without the consent of the mother. Then, of course, you need to use um, an aseptic technique so that the mother doesn't end up with an infection. You give pain medication, you need to alert the operating theater because the procedure can fail. Then um, you put the patient in lithotomy usually, you drape them and you catheterize them. So this is an example of a craniosynthesis. It's a common procedure that is done, especially in uh, patients with hydrocephalus. So you push a big cannula in the skull so that uh, the cerebrospinal fluid comes out. And when it comes out, the, the head of the baby usually shrinks and the, and the delivery takes place. So that is about uh, craniosynthesis. The idea is that you are pushing a big cannula, like a gray cannula in the, in the skull, and then the CSF comes out and the head becomes smaller. Then we have a craniotomy. Craniotomy is like making a bigger, a bigger incision in the skull so that the brain material comes out and the baby comes out similar to the previous procedure. So we have indications there, we have contraindications there and so on and so forth. So this is an example of a craniotomy taking place for you guys who looked at the, um, the our lecture on um, uh, surgical instruments. We saw this instrument here. This is an odd harm forcep. So you push it in the skull, you open it, then the brain material comes out, then you pull out the, um, the baby because the head has now, has now shrunk. So this is a craniotomy. Then there's a decapitation. Decapitation is really cutting off the head uh, of the fetus because um, maybe it's in transverse line, it's been difficult to deliver, the baby's already dead for many days. In rural areas, maybe the baby has been dead for three, four days, and then you are, you don't want to take this woman for scissors. There's an infection. They'll end up with peritonitis, pelvic abscess, if you take this woman for scissors. So you find a way to deliver uh, the woman vaginally to reduce the risk of um, infections. So these discussions are very difficult in the urban areas and in the developed world because they don't have patients who've been laboring for a week and the baby is dead already. The mother is already infected. She already has an infected episiotomy by the time she gets to you. So you are saying, why should I take this woman for cesarean section? So that's about decapitation. So you can use what is called a decapitation hook, or you can use what is called a decapitation saw. All those uh, instruments, they are in that, um, that um, lecture we had already on uh, surgical instruments. So you can check them out from there. It's posted on that YouTube uh, channel. Then um, this procedure is an evisceration. So you can see there that you have, a, you have a baby that is in transverse lie. So you, you make an incision in the abdomen and try and remove the abdominal contents and then pull out the baby like that. So that is called an evisceration. It's one that you do normally in a transverse lie, in a shoulder presentation and so on. Then this is a cladotomy. So cladotomy is cutting the clavicles. So you have a shoulder distortion. The head has come out, but the head is stuck and the baby is dead. You can take uh, a scissors, cut the clavicles to reduce the biacromial diameter and pull out uh, the fetus when the clavicles are stuck. So that's um, an example of a cladotomy there. Then we have a cephisiotomy. This procedure was commonly done but is no longer done. So symphysiotomy is cutting through the symphysis pubis. And then if you cut the symphysis pubis, uh, the, the, the pelvic diameter expands and the baby uh, easily comes out. So that is a symphysiotomy. This used to be done the time uh, we were interns, people used to do symphysiotomy when there's an obstructed labor, but now it's no longer done because the mother will be on crutches uh, for a while, six weeks, eight weeks, because that is now you've created a fracture really, and so on. So that is, that is about uh, symphysiotomy. So that is the procedure over there. Complications are many. You can cause rupture deuteras, you can cause cervical lacerations, bladder injury, rectal injury, uh, vesicovaginal fistulas can all be caused. So you need to manage the patient after the procedure, manage the third stage, keep the catheter for 14 days, treat the infection, 
uh, make sure you correct the anemia and the shock and help the woman mourn the loss, especially that this, these babies really came out in pieces. You cancel her for her next uh, pregnancy. So that was about this presentation. I'll post it on that uh, YouTube channel. I'll share it and you can share with your, um, with your colleagues as well. So we move on to the agenda items for today, which is um, 